In soil science classes, we are taught that soils are derived from a parent material. This parent material is just as diverse as the above soil. In fact, the type of parent material and climate are two of the most important factors in what type of soil will eventually be formed. Today, I will discuss how the mineralogical composition of parent material has the ability to affect the soil formation process and what type of soil has the potential to form. Minerals make up rocks. Rocks make up parent material. Parent material breaks down through the hydrolysis reaction to form soil products. This principle may be basic, but the transformations in between tell an incredible story. The breakdown of rocks and minerals into soil is done when acidified water interacts with the soil material. Due to carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, Natural rainwater is most always acidic. The water first reacts at the surface, but also percolates down through the soil, continuing the weathering process deeper into the parent material. As acidified water interacts with soil material, thermodynamically unstable minerals break down into highly weathered clays and metal oxides. Soluble cations are also leached from the soil system. For this reason, our oceans are salty, and this is the reason marble statues will begin to dissolve, losing their former beauty. Many minerals are often highly unstable in a normal soil environment. Some of these unstable minerals are olivine, pyroxene, amphibole, and plagioclase. The presence of these minerals in a soil often indicates a young soil that has only been minimally weathered. Some minerals, however, are very stable even in the most extreme of soil environments. Quartz greatly resists weathering. Evidence is everywhere around us. Look at any beach and you are sure to see mountains of pure quartz sand. Clays are secondary minerals that are formed when unstable minerals weather. Clays themselves will also undergo similar weathering processes as other minerals, forming highly weathered clays. 2 to 1 expansive clay minerals such as illite and vermiculite are clays that come from the weathering of mica minerals. Presence of these in a soil indicates a moderately young soil. The presence of complex clays in soil is important for agricultural purposes. 2 to 1 clays are associated with having high cation exchange capacity or CEC. Clays exist in the form of sheets. These sheets have the ability to hold important nutrients that are needed by plants. Two to one clays have the potential to weather further to a simple one to one clay like kaolinite. Kaolinite is a high aluminum clay that has no cation exchange capacity. High kaolinite contents in soil indicates a highly weathered soil. Other soil weathering products that are not clays are metal hydroxides such as gutite and hematite. Gutite and hematite are iron oxides and hydroxides that are common in high iron soils. Presence of these minerals indicate a highly weathered soil. Soils with bright red color indicate presence of these metal hydroxides. As has been discussed, there are many types of soil minerals that behave quite differently in the soil environment. The parent material dictates what these minerals are and also what types of soils have the potential to develop. After discussing the different possible soil minerals, I will now discuss a few important soil orders. There are 12 soil orders in all. These soil types are categorized based on mineral composition, organic material, and the relative age of the soil. You will see that parent material does have some consequence in determining what type of soil will eventually be made. Histosols are often found in tropical climates. One would expect these soils to be poor agricultural soils on a mineralogical basis due to the intense weathering. However, the presence of high organic matter, which has very high CEC, results in some of the best production land. These soils are devoid in complex clays, but high in organic matter. 
Oxisols predominantly exist in tropical climates. These soils are dominated by metal oxides often developed over mafic parent material like basalt. Mafic bedrock is very high iron and as a result, the slightest exposure to water induces rapid chemical weathering with little chance to develop clays high in CEC. These soils depend on heavy fertilization to maintain high food production. Soils developed over parent material rich in mica, such as granite, tend to form soils very high in CEC. The U.S. Midwest overlays shale derived from granite formed in the last ice age. These soils are relatively young and have high production levels of crops due to the high presence of 2 to 1 clays like illite and vermiculite. The type of parent material in the associated mineralogical composition has proven to be a major controlling factor in the determination of many of the important soil characteristics. There indeed is a very strong association between parent material and the type of soil that will be produced.